Okay, I think we're, yeah, I pressed recording, so we're recording now, okay? Yeah, wait one second. Um, we're trying to get in. Okay, excellent. Um, yeah. So do you know, like, what our topic is? Like, the whole yeah. lot of stuff about, are you allowed to change genes in humans and stuff? Yeah, I just educated myself, so uh, we're, so we're good. Genetic right. editing. CRISPR. It's very exciting. Very, very exciting. Yes. So, what would you uh, you want me? To, so, go ahead. What are your questions? Like, what are some like? What are the halakhic opinions about it? Okay. So, there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot of a lot of potential halakhic issues. So, first of all, you realize what this CRISPR is. This is unbelievable. This is this whole idea of genetic engineering is uh, is, is mind boggling. The potential here is mind boggling. Um, you, you're talking about so many areas. You can uh, you can edit you can edit plants. You know you can make uh, genetically edit plants so that you can make wheat and uh, that uh, corn. It should be it should it should be larger and be able to feed more people to end world hunger. You know this, uh, to edit to, to edit uh, diseases out already from the embryo for, from a sick person to edit the. Uh, to edit out bad genes that are causing them to be sick. It's, it's an amazing, it's, it's an amazing idea. It really is an amazing idea. So uh, the, the, the real, uh, so some interesting halakhic issues will come up with plants, uh, let's say, or non-humans or with, with animals. So let's say you can genetically edit a pig, right? That it will have, it will chew its cud and it will have a, and, and it already has a split hook, but now it'll, now it'll chew its cud. So, uh, will that pig now be a goat pig? Or conversely, let's say you take a cow and you genetically engineer it, and it will no longer have a split hoof and no longer as chew its cud, but it would still be kosher. So that's one kind of that. That's one kind of an wish issue. Let's say animals and kosherists. Let's say with an estro. Where if you genetically engineer an estro, and an estro has to look like an estro, and not like a lemon. So what if you genetically engineer an estrog that it uh, no longer looks like a lemon? Yeah, I'm saying, look, no longer looks like an estrog looks like a lemon. It's now smooth, it's not bumpy. Um, it, uh, it'll, it'll take on the characteristics of a lemon more than, more than an estrog. So that's the, uh, these, are, these are the kind of questions that a lot of questions that will come up with uh, genetic engineering. Now with human beings, what you really need to distinguish is between uh, b between therapeutic genetic engineering and uh, or genetic editing and um, and non-therapeutic. If it's just uh, to um, design a child, it's going to be a perfect child. You know, this child is going to be uh, a genius student. It's going to be a perfect athlete. He's going to have the best looks. You know, that's you know design. If it's not therapeutic, there are bunch already in my life. You know, your top people think that that's that, that's highly highly problematic. So the only thing they would allow is the uh, is, is therapeutic. So some of the shadows that come up are as follows. The way it is currently, it's not currently practiced, though there's a lot of research, that tremendous amount of research that's being done, but it's not currently practiced because it is currently considered to be dangerous. In fact, there was somebody that, that actually did it, did some genetic engineering uh, fairly recently, and uh, he presented it at a, uh, at, at a, at a scientific uh, conference and uh, everybody was very angry at him because they agreed nobody's to do it yet because it's too dangerous and he did it. And this person may be sent to jail. So it's uh, not only halakhically problematic to endanger somebody, it's also uh, halakhically, halakh it's, it's also um, civil law considers this to be uh, a, pr a problem as well. So, uh, so, so, uh, so at this point, it's dangerous. The, the, the danger is, is an issue. And then we need to get a point, well, how dangerous is dangerous? What is it safe enough to be able to do it? That's really the next step in this, uh, in, in this process, uh, in, in terms of the halacha. Um, anything else? I, what, what other questions did you have? I, have, I can go on. I can go on like this and rant for. Uh, so about like, you feel like you could make a pig chew its cud. So that would that make it kosher? That's an interesting issue. So you could say based on uh, based on the mission of Bukharos that says Yotzim and Aser Aser Yotzim and Muta Muta becomes what makes an animal kosher? Not so much that it has split hooves and a uh, and chews its cud. It's that it comes from an animal that chews its chews its cud and has split hooves. In other words. 
an animal that comes from a kosher animal is kosher. Uh, an animal that comes from a non-kosher animal is non-kosher. So even if the animal will have kosher features, if it came from a non-kosher animal, it's not kosher. If the, if uh, the animal and the opposite and, the, and vice versa. Yes, yes, Aaron. What happens if you do, you make one that chooses its cubs, and then the, you don't eat that one, but you eat his baby that also chooses its cubs. So uh, that would make it. That's question. That, that already, yeah, you know, Taka. That's a good question. Where do you draw the line? Maybe. Maybe mm. now it becomes uh, an animal that's mutter, or do you go by its origin? That is to go ultimately where it came from, what its source is. That's an interesting question. You would have to breed the parents to be able to breed the... Yeah, right. I guess that... Maybe that could be. Yeah, maybe that could be already. The, the, the second generation would be already. The overall answer is no, basically. Like right now. Uh, At the moment, it's not safe. And for humans... Aaron, mute yourself. For humans. For humans. But for animals, animals, it's, uh, it's, it's okay. So animals, animals, it's okay, animals. but it wouldn't make it kosher. Not for the first generation. The second generation is Aaron saying uh, yeah, that might work. That taco may work. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's anything else about this topic. Is there any like other things that you're allowed to or not allowed to do? Uh, tons. Uh, you get you, you know me. <laughs> I could go on for, uh, for a long, long time. So let me just try to uh, give you some more uh, s s some more of the issues that will uh, that come up so let's say okay so now we need to talk let's talk about human engineering so how do you human engineer what you do is you basically you take you're going to take genetic material from the mother genetic material from the father and you combine and then you combine it in the in the, in the lab okay combine the lab it's combined and now you have an embryo it's not yet implanted in the mother or the wife it's uh yeah you have an you have a uh, an, a um you have you have you've created an embryo outside the body now you want to that's where the genetic editing is going to take place so the question so the question comes up is like this we're going to try to genetically engineer it and uh sometimes it will be successful sometimes it won't be successful if it's not going to be successful they're going to discard that embryo the question is are, is, that, is that considered to be murder? If you're going to discard a fertilized, uh, a fertilized egg is, that has not been implanted in, in, a, in a woman, is that considered to be ritzika? Is that considered to be murder? So most of the believe that that's not considered to be murder because for two reasons. First of all, the Gemara Yivamos tells us that a baby before a fetus, before it reaches the age of 40 days, is considered to be maya ba'alma, just liquid, fluid. It's not really considered to be uh, it doesn't have, it's not, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't have human characteristics quite yet. So that's one reason why it may not be a problem. The second reason is, is actually more, more convincing, and that is since it's not been implanted in a human being, abortion is a problem. Killing a fetus is a problem only when you are, in the words of Tarsus Noah, you are shofech dam ha'adam ba'adam. You're killing man with a man. Dam ha'adam ba'adam. The man with a man, that's considered to be that's a, that's uh, that, that's why it's halachically also to abort in general in general in most cases because you're killing man within man. But that means the man is within man. If the man is a human being within a human being, but if the embryo is not implanted yet in a human being, Rosh Schechter and uh, Rosam and Goldberg, and it seems the consensus most of Abanim would say that that's not considered to be murder. So that's a big issue. That's a big issue. Any, and and before I continue on with, with what I have to say, anything else that you have to say? Aaron, you have something more to say? No? Not really. Uh, Aaron, you have something you want to say? No? So, uh, yeah. yeah. One last thing. Yeah. So then would it be okay if you made, let's say, 25 embryos and yeah. only five of them were okay? You're saying that the rabbis would allow you to throw to away discard the, the, the other 20. Yeah, that's right. Because not yet implanted in human beings. You know that possible. Gracious Paraktas, Shofer Dam Ha Adam Ba Adam, right? That that's the mur murder is is uh, mur the problem of abortion is your Shofer Dam Ha Adam Ba Adam. You're killing man with man the, within man. There's not a man within him. It's not a human being within a human being. It's not a, it's not within a human being. If it hasn't been implanted. In, the embryo has not been implanted a woman yet. You can discard it, even though it's fertilized. Right. Good. So that's a big thing. Let's yeah. let's, let's move on to another thing. Some of the rabbanim. 
where a minority of Rabbanim were, uh, were, were against CRISPR genetic editing because they felt that it's too much interference in Hashem's world. They felt it's analogous to the Isra Kilayim. You know, Kilayim, you're not allowed to uh, start mixing one, one, uh, one species with another. I can't uh, mix an, aran, an orange with an apple and create a, uh, an, a, uh, an, aura, a, a, a an or apple, right, so to speak. I can't, I, you know, that's uh, specifically prohibited in the Torah. The Ramban writes, because that's too much interference in Hashem's world. Hashem has given us this world to improve upon, to, uh, to, to enhance. Hashem made the world incomplete. I, and, I'm, and, I, and that's not a mistake what I just said. Hashem made the world incomplete. Hashem made the world deliberately incomplete. This is enormously important. I'm going to say it a third time. Hashem made this world deliberately incomplete. He's not saying anything bad about Hashem. This is Hashem's plan. Hashem made the world incomplete. What, what's our job is to complete it. And you can prove it from something that the three of us had. What did the three of us have? We all had, we were, all three of us had when we were eight days old or somewhere along those lines if we were uh, healthy. What's that? A bris mila. Bris mila. A chutzpah. How, what, what, what, what, what, how do we do a bris mila? Hashem made us one way and all of a sudden we change it. What's the answer? Hashem commanded us. Hashem deliberately, bris mila is, is communicating this idea that we were made incomplete and we have to complete. That's the human being's job is to, uh, is to complete that which is incomplete. So if the, the, uh, the, the embryo needs editing, it needs editing. It can be, it could be, uh, it could be, it can be edited, says Roshon Mazam and Arbach, against what the minority Rabban will say that it's like kilayim. Kilayim means that it's, it's, it's too much editing. You can't, it, it, it's your kilayim is like, oh, you're editing Hashem's world, not, not right, can't do it. So, so someone, yeah, but Someone, one second, one second, one second. Some of the rabbanim wanted to uh, extrapolate from that up. Oh, so uh, just like kilayim is too much genetic engineering, so too in general genetic editing is all aser. Rosh Hashanah Rabbi said no. That which the Torah says is aser is aser beyond that. No, there's a very famous Tiferet Yisrael who says that which Hashem said is aser is aser. If he didn't say it's aser, it's mutter. It's very important. That's a very that's a very fundamental idea. Our good friend Adam, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so let's say that, you know, like, like it's like a lot of generations have passed. Like, every, you know, uh, the, uh, the baby's going to die by like 25 or something. Because yeah. like heart attacks are bigger than they fail. So are you able to change that? Like if you're... Are so you gonna, are, are you... Are you, are you yes. Yeah, so in other words, the majority of our bottom hole, like Rosh Hashanah and Arbach, that you can, you can definitely do genetic engineering. Okay. Genetic editing, certainly. But again, it has to be safe. At this point, it's not yet safe because you know you, you solve one problem, you gen genetically engineer for one pro problem, you create another problem. So uh, that's where we are currently. But uh, as as things improve, as the technology improves and more advances are made in Mir Tashem, uh, then uh, we'll be able to uh, bore refuos. Now Hashem creates refuos, or enables human being, empowers us, gives us the chachma to be able to solve these problems and uh it should be um it should be bring bracha look i have a child with down syndrome and that's uh that's because of a uh a, a problem with the gene and if you can uh if you can uh do gene therapy on the on the on the person to cure them of that it's a, that would be uh a, a unbelievable but again at this yeah. point it's too dangerous to do that okay i think that's it um all right thank you but let, let, that's actually just, to, let me just end off a little bit, just a little bit, just give you a little bit more. Okay. Um, Hashem made the world that we're supposed to improve the world. Right at the beginning of Sefer Bereshit, Parakav, it says, Hashem says to Adam, we're supposed to, we're supposed to conquer the world. Kivshua. The Ramban says we're supposed to develop the world. And, um, and this is our mandate. Our mandate is to take the world and to improve it. And, um, and that's, um, that's what CRISPR does. God willing, Hashem should, uh, should, should give all, should, should, should enable researchers to be able to make unbelievable breakthroughs and uh, cure diseases. And he should, uh, make, he should enable us to, uh, <laughs> to be able to solve our current problem that we have now that's, uh, that's, uh, that's just turning the, turning the, it's just shutting the world down and to be able to uh, enable us to overcome. All right. So I wish everybody, I wish yeah. you both Adam and, and Aaron could do really, you, really well in your project. Um, could you try and tell it? It's to figure out how to send it to us. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do that. Let's see what I could do. Let's see if I can figure it out. Okay. okay. Thank you.
İyi aşağı kalkın efendim. Sağ olun. Thank you so much. Okay. See you. You are. Bye bye.